Observing what's happening, as we did in the last section, uh, is, gives us a, a way to predict performance, but it really doesn't help us understand uh, what the algorithm's doing. So next we're going to look at mathematical model, uh, a way to get a better concept of what's really happening. Uh, again, this uh, concept was uh, really developed and uh, popularized by Don Knuth uh, starting in the, in the late 60s. Uh, at, at that time, computer systems were really becoming complicated uh, for the first time, and uh, computer scientists were concerned about whether we really were going to be able to understand what's going on. Uh, and Knuth was very direct in saying that uh, this is something that uh, we certainly can do. Uh, we can uh, calculate the total running time of a program by uh, identifying all the basic operations, figuring out the cost, figuring out the frequency of execution, uh, and summing up the cost times frequency for all the operations. Uh, you have to analyze the program to determine what set of operations, and the cost depends on the machine and the computer uh, in the system is what we talked about before. Uh, the frequency leads us to mathematics because it depends on the algorithm and the input data. Uh, Knuth has written a series of books that give very detailed and uh, all exact analyses within a particular computer model for uh, a wide range of algorithms. So from Knuth, we know that in principle, we can get accurate mathematical models uh, for the performance of algorithms uh, or programs in operation. All right, so uh, what, what does this process look like? Uh, well, uh, you can, uh, if you want, uh, run experiments. Uh, in, in ancient times, we would uh, actually look at the computer manual, and uh, every computer came with a manual that said precisely how long each instruction would take. Uh, nowadays, it's a little more complicated, so we run experiments. Uh, and uh, you can go ahead and do a billion ads and figure out that maybe on your computer an ad takes 2.1 nanoseconds. Uh, or you can do more complicated functions like computer sign or an arctangent, although that's already getting close to the analysis of algorithms. Uh, so there's some way to determine the cost of the basic operations. Uh, <coughs> and uh, so we'll just, uh, in most, most of the cases, uh, we'll just postulate that it's some constant, and you can figure out what the constant is. Uh, although, uh, when we're working with a collection of objects, of n objects, uh, there's some things that take time proportional to n. Uh, like if you're going to allocate an array of size n, uh, it takes time proportional to n, uh, because in Java, uh, the <coughs> default is that uh, all the elements in the array are initialized to zero. Uh, in other operations, uh, it depends on the system implementation. Uh, and an important one is string concatenation. If you concatenate two strings, uh, the running time is proportional to the length of the string. Uh, and many novices uh, programming in Java make the mistake of assuming that that's a constant time operation when it's not. All right, so that's the uh, cost of each operation. Uh, more interesting is uh, the frequency of operation, of execution of the operations. So uh, this is a, a very simple variant of the three-sum problem. That's the one-sum problem. That's how many numbers are actually equal to zero, how many single numbers add up to zero. Uh, so that one is just one for loop, and we go through and we test if the number is zero and uh, increment our count. Uh, and by analyzing that code, uh, you can see that uh, i and count have to be declared, uh, and they have to be assigned to zero. Uh, there's uh, compares of i against n, and there's n plus one of them. There's compares of a of i against zero. There's n of those, n array accesses. Uh, and the number incremented is, uh, number of times as an increment is variable. I's incremented n times, but count could be incremented any number from zero to n times. And so uh, that frequency is dependent on the input data. <coughs> now we might need a model for describing that, or uh, uh, maybe uh, there's other operations that are more expensive and we won't need to worry about that. So let's look at the uh, next more complicated problem is what about the frequency of execution of instructions in this program, which is the two-sum problem, how many pairs of integers sum to zero? 
Uh, well, in this case, you have to do a little bit of math uh, to see that uh, when we, uh, when i goes from 0 to n and j goes from i plus 1 to n, uh, the number of uh, compares that we do, or let's say array accesses that we do, uh, is uh, 2 for each uh, time the if statement is executed for a i and a j, and that time is the thing is executed uh, uh, n minus 1 times the first time through the loop and n minus 2 the second and so forth, it's the sum of the integers uh, from 0 up to n minus 1, uh, which is a simple discrete sum, uh, 1 half n times n minus 1, and since we're doing it twice, uh, the number of array axes is n, n minus 1. Uh, so we can go ahead and get these uh, actual exact counts, uh, but already it's getting uh, a little bit tedious uh, to do that. Uh, and uh, as far back as Turing, uh, who also knew that, as well as Babbage did, that we want to have a measure of the amount of work involved in the process, uh, he recognized that you didn't want to necessarily go through and do it in full detail. Uh, it's still helpful to have a crude estimate. So you could count up the number of times that every operation is applied, give it weights, and, and count the subtract and so forth. Uh, but uh, maybe we should just count the ones that are most expensive. Uh, that's what Turing said uh, in 1947. Uh, and realistically, uh, that's what we do nowadays. Uh, so uh, rather than going in and counting uh, uh, every little detail, we take some basic operation uh, that's uh, maybe the most expensive and or and or the one that's uh, executed the most often, uh, the one that cost times frequency is the highest, uh, and use that as a proxy for the running time. Essentially making the hypothesis that the running time uh, is going to uh, grow like a constant times that. So in this case we're going to pick array axes. Uh, so that's the first simplification. And the second simplification is that we're going to ignore low order terms in the formulas that we derive. Uh, and there's an easy way to do that. It's called the tilde notation. Uh, and the, the idea is when uh, n is large in a formula like this, uh, the n cubed term is uh, much, much higher than the n term or 16. In fact, so much so that uh, we wouldn't even uh, we'd hardly notice these low order terms. So all of these formulas are tilde 1 sixth n cubed. Uh, and that's a fine uh, representative or approximate approximation uh, to these quantities. Uh, and it greatly simplifies the calculations to throw away the low-order low order terms like this. So by focusing on one operation and uh, throwing away the tildes, the, the low-order terms, uh, and this is the technical definition of tilde, uh, it just, f of n tilde g of n means the limit as f n or g n equals 1. And you can check that that's going to hold in these kinds of situations. Uh, <coughs> So that greatly simplifies uh, the frequency counts. Uh, and if we're only picking one thing, uh, we're just talking about tilde uh, n squared and maybe another uh, tilde n squared uh, for the increment for the two sum problem, say. Uh, so again, when n is large, the terms are negligible. When, when n is really small, they're not negligible, but uh, we don't really care because we're trying to estimate running times for large n and running times for small n uh, are going to be small no matter what. All right, so uh, now we're using both the cost model and the tilde notation, and then we can simply say that uh, this program uses tilde n squared array axes uh, and have implicit the hypothesis that we think the running time is going to be uh, tilde a constant times n squared. Uh, okay, well now what about three sum? Let's do uh, our real problem. Uh, so now we have the triple loop. Uh, and uh, then uh, we have to do a more complicated combinatorial problem. Uh, and it's not that big a deal, really. Uh, we're looking at the distinct uh, number of ways you can choose uh, three things uh, out of n, uh, and that's a binomial coefficient. Uh, and uh, again, doing the math and using the tilde, it's just tilde 1 6 n cubed. Uh, three ray axes for each triple, so we can say half n cubed. 
Uh, so uh, we're not uh, computing and summing the costs of all operations. Uh, that's too much work. Uh, we're picking the most uh, expensive uh, in terms of cost times frequency uh, and approximating that and uh, trying to get a good model for the running time. Uh, so uh, now, uh, most we're not going to do a full discrete mathematics in this course, uh, but there's some uh, basic things that uh, we'll want to use and are not that difficult to understand. Uh, so a lot of times we find out that uh, we need to come up with an estimate of a discrete sum, like we did for 1 plus 2 up to n, uh, or some of the squares or uh, other things like the three-sum triple loop. Uh, and so actually, uh, if you've had a basic calculus, one way to think of it is to just replace the sum with an interval, integral. Uh, that usually works, or we can do the math and use the so-called Euler-Maclaurin summation formula to get a true approximation. Uh, but if you think of it this way, uh, you'll uh, believe us uh, when we say that that thing is tilde half n squared. Or sum of 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third up to 1 over n, that's like integral from x equals 1 to n 1 over x, and that's natural log of n. Uh, even the three-sum triple loop, uh, kind of, uh, if you're uh, uh, used to multiple integrals, will quickly give you the 1 sixth n cubed. Uh, there's uh, many more and other techniques uh, that we could use for this, uh, and we're not going to teach all that, uh, but uh, we'll sometimes refer to results of this type. All right, so uh, in principle, uh, Knuth tells us that accurate mathematical models are available. Uh, in practice, uh, we can get really complicated formulas. Uh, we also might need some advanced mathematics uh, that the uh, theoretician uh, will revel in, but that uh, uh, maybe uh, people learning algorithms for the first time might not be expected to know. Uh, so, uh, in the end, uh, careful, exact models are bef best left for ex uh, experts. Uh, there's really a lot of things that can go on. On the other hand, uh, approximate models are definitely worthwhile. Uh, and for all the algorithms that we consider, uh, we'll try to communicate uh, a reasonable approximate model uh, that can be used to describe the, money, uh, the running time. Uh, sometimes we'll uh, give the mathematical proofs, uh, and other times uh, we'll have to just uh, cite the work uh, of some expert. Uh, 